Hey, so building a new house should be exciting and fun, right? And it usually is, but you should be aware of some of the potholes, the roadblocks, uh, maybe some of the landmines that might pop up during the build process. Now, having an understanding of the top 10 risks of building a home, that's really crucial. And knowing that before you even begin the process can go a long way towards uh, relieving some of your um, anxiety, might give you a little bit more peace of mind, and it might even prevent you from going into what we call new home construction regrets. So if you're thinking about building a home, make sure you stay to the end because there are some key points at the very end that you're not going to want to miss and stay to the end. And I'll share with you how you can download my brand new updated new home construction guide for free. <laughs> Hi there and welcome back. My name is John Farron. I'm a realtor with the Farron Group at HomeSmart Lifestyles here in Queen Creek, Arizona. And we help people just like you from all across the country relocate to Queen Creek and the surrounding area. You know, when it comes to new home construction, it's a pretty involved process. And it's pretty simple to make a mistake, make one misstep that could leave you in a really bad situation. So again, don't skip any of this video because it may just be the one step that you missed that becomes the issue for you later on. Now, building a home should be a lot of fun, and the issues that we're gonna talk about in this video often stem from a few easy, avoidable mistakes. Things like being unfamiliar with the construction process, or not having a realtor on your side who's looking out for your best interest, or maybe even picking the complete wrong builder to work with in the first place. Now again, we're talking about the dangers of building a home, so by nature this video might come across a little bit negative, but I want to uh, ensure that you know that most of the builders that I work with do a, do a great job, they're easy to work with, and I get along well with them. But being prepared for the road bumps that could come along the way, like I said, goes a long way towards making this process a lot less stressful for you. So let's get into it. Number one is the builder's contract. Did you know that every builder's purchase contract is written with a heavy slant towards protecting the builder and providing you, the buyer, with very few protections? So when you purchase a resale home, there's a state approved contract that gets used. It's about 10 pages in length and it provides protections for both the buyer and the seller. But builder contracts are loaded with legal jargon and they can be in excess of 100 pages with all sorts of little things thrown in there that you would never even know about. So simply put, when you sign a builder's contract, you're giving up an awful lot of your rights and protections should something go wrong and, and your whole thing ends up in a legal battle. Now, I'm not trying to scare you or intimidate you in any way. You just need to be aware. And honestly, if you want a new build home, there's no way around uh, the builder's contract. So uh, just make sure that you've read it up front, that you understand what's in it so that down the road, you're not really hit with any big surprises. Number two is a lack of communication. And this can be so frustrating, especially if you're experiencing delay after delay after delay. You know, you might call the builder's rep or you might call your sales rep and uh, leave a message over and over and not get a call back. And when you finally do get a hold of somebody, the answers that they give you as to why things are delayed or what's going on are usually pretty vague. You wanna know when your house is gonna be completed? Well, they might tell you, we really don't know. It could be anywhere from three to six more months. Or you wanna know why uh, work has stopped on a particular uh, section of the home and they're gonna tell you, well, it's because of a material shortage and we don't know when we're going to be getting more materials in. Now those answers, as vague as they are, generally are quite true as well. Your builder uh, hopefully isn't going to be lying to you. In fact, there's so many variables involved in building a home that it often is very difficult to give you a specific answer. But it does leave you wondering, well, why didn't you call me instead of you, the buyer, having to call them. Why didn't they call you to explain this? Now, the best builders, they will call you on a weekly basis, even if there's nothing new to report. And the really good ones, they even will send you pictures to show you the progress of your home. But for a builder to just leave you in the dark, hanging, wondering what's going on, I got, I got to tell you, that's just wrong. All right, moving on to number three, and that is longer than expected build times. 
you know, in 2021, we saw massive delays. We had supply chain issues that, that put a halt to all sorts of manufacturing and getting the product to the builders. Plus, there were labor shortages as well. And those types of setbacks, they're out of the builder's control. You can't really hold them responsible for that. But some builders suffered massive setbacks, while others uh, just had minimal delays and minor problems cropped up. And so then you got to ask, well, why did one have such a bad experience and the others uh, were able to manage things? Well, it comes down to uh, the ones that were able to manage things, they prepared ahead and they were able to adapt to the changing market. Those who might have had massive displays, they might have been a little slow on the uptake and maybe not ordered your stuff uh, ahead of time. They ordered it uh, when your selections uh, were made, whereas the other builder may have ordered a lot of materials and supplies ahead of time so they would have it on hand. So quick story, I had two clients. They were looking at the same builder. We'll call it Builder A. One went with Builder A. The other one decided to go with Builder B. So the client with Builder A, their home was built on time. Yeah, it was an extended time period over what we're accustomed to, but it was built on time with little to no delays and very few problems that cropped up along the way. The client that went with Builder B, they suffered delay after delay after delay, and there were mistakes and there was bad communication, and um, it turned out to not be the greatest experience for them. So number four is the builder can actually send you back to the design center months after you've already made your selections. Now this happens for various reasons, but generally it's because of whatever flooring or curtains or whatever you selected. Uh, they're either no longer in stock, they're not being produced anymore, they're on severe back order. So the builder will have you go back to the design center and make new selections. So that's really frustrating for the buyer because one, you're not getting what you wanted in the first place. And two, now you gotta find something else that you like that also will go along with the selections you did make previously where those materials are in stock and are being installed in your home. And of course, the builder can do that because it says so buried right there in those 100 pages of contract. Now, as a follow-up to that, number five is the lower-end builders. They may not even have a design center. Without a design center, you'll have to make your selections by looking at pictures or maybe some small samples that they might have in the office, or in many cases, by simply just choosing an entire design package that includes pre-selected flooring, carpeting, counters, cabinets, etc. Number six, if you're not careful, you could end up with a low quality, poorly built home. You know what they say, you get what you pay for. You know, people often choose the cheapest builder in their area uh, to save money, and I get that, especially now with interest rates going up and home prices going up. But these are usually the builders that will cut a lot of corners throughout the process and you end up paying for it in the end. In fact, I typically shy away from those builders because I honestly feel that my clients, that would be you, deserve much better than that. And so my advice is find the builder that offers the most value and not necessarily the one who has the lowest price. All right, so number seven is you gotta watch out for those builder upgrades and how much they charge for them. The price of upgrades can vary significantly from builder to builder, and you could end up spending thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars more uh, by building a home with one builder over building a very similar home in a similar area with another builder. Now, there are a lot of the interior upgrades that perhaps you can do yourself or you can have it done after you've moved into your home. So it's always good to consider the upgrades and whether you wanna have the builder do them or if you wanna do them later. Now, I go into a lot more detail uh, on this in my video, New Construction Home Upgrades, Should You or Shouldn't You? And I'll go ahead and put a link to that video right up here. So make sure you watch that one after you've watched this one, of course. Now, before we move on to the final three things to watch out for, if you're getting value from this video, please hit that like or that thumbs up button. That just lets me know that the content I'm putting out is useful and relevant to you. And while you're at it, you might consider subscribing and hitting that bell. That way you'll be notified every time a new video gets uploaded, which I try to do about once a week. All right, moving on to number eight, the wrong options were installed. Yes, it does happen. Now, it might have been a mistake, or maybe it was done intentionally by the builder. Who knows? But either way, uh, it becomes very time-consuming and costly for the builder to have to go back after the fact 
and make those uh, changes. Remember my client that went with Builder B a minute ago? Well, they installed the complete wrong brick fascia on the front of his home, and they had to come back and take that brick off and put the right fascia on. And as that same client experienced, there's kind of a related topic in here, a subtopic, if you will, and that's where, uh, let's say, the carpeting that you chose comes from two different dye lots or two different manufacturing dates. And so the colors or the textures, they're not exactly the same. Now, the builder will... Um, tell you that that could happen and that they'll do their best to match things up but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to come out and rip everything out and put something else different in uh, to avoid those mismatched dye lots and they can do that because why well it's another clause that's buried deep inside that contract now this actually happens maybe more often than you think but it's a battle that your real estate agent can fight for you 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 did hire an agent, right? You are working with a realtor, right? Um, if not, well, to find out why that's important, make sure you check out this video right up here. All right, let's move on to the next one. Number nine, you could end up closing on your home with items still missing or unfinished. Now this could be actual items like the appliances aren't in yet, or there's some bathroom fixtures or mirrors that haven't been installed yet because they're on back order, or it could be um, more cosmetic type things such as paint touch-ups or repairing some baseboards or adjusting the cabinets that kind of thing so the builders goal is to get a certificate of occupancy issued by the city and that ensures that the home is in a living condition livable condition so you can get a certificate of occupancy while still needing a bathroom fixture or some touch-ups but the builder will make it right you might close on your home without those things, but they will make it right. And as soon as they can, they'll get those proper things installed for you. In fact, I had one client, he closed on his home and he didn't even have his kitchen appliances. But he was, he was so excited about it, he and his wife. He says, I've got a barbecue grill and a microwave. I am thrilled to be living here in my new home. And of course, within a week or less, uh, his appliances were delivered. And then just before you do close on your home, you'll have an opportunity to walk the home with the builder and ensure that um, all the things that needed to be fixed have been taken care of, that the appliances, uh, if they did come in, that they've been installed and that the house is in the proper condition that you're anticipating. All right, so number 10, and this one really kind of caught me off guard uh, when I first started seeing this, and that is the builder can actually increase the price of your home months after you've already signed off on your final purchase price if they have included an addendum to the contract that allows them to actually do this and this is one of those addendums that sometimes they slip in uh, among those hundred other pages and you might very well miss it so the builders that did this they did it to combat the skyrocketing uh, cost of building the home a lot of builders especially the good ones they honored their contract price at the time that you moved into your home and they may have even lost money on that deal and if they did well what they did was they made it right with the buyer honored that contract price and then they halted production while they got caught up on some of their other homes and also while they figured out uh, how to structure their costs but the builders who use this addendum they could charge up to 10 percent more at the time of closing than what you actually signed up for when you first started to build your home now again that was to cover uh, the additional cost in building that home so uh, for example your five hundred thousand dollar home that you signed for in june might well end up costing you five hundred and fifty thousand dollars the following May when you actually go to close on it. Now you were given the opportunity to walk away and back out of the deal and the builders would give you back your earnest deposit. But see that worked out great for them because now they could turn around and sell that home for an additional 70 or $80,000 to a new buyer. But for, the, but for you, the buyer, now you've got to start all over again with a new builder in a new community and a new build time. Or the other option was to go look at resale homes. But remember, we had that feeding frenzy and homes were selling uh, for way over asking price and with multiple offers and 
Uh, homes were few and far on the market, so that just really wasn't much of an option either. So what happened is most buyers, the ones that signed that addendum, they just had to suck it up and pay that extra amount and move into their homes. All right, now I know I said this is the top 10 things and I just gave you 10, but I'm feeling a little bit generous, so I'm going to throw in a bonus one, especially if you've made it this far, I think you kind of kind of deserve one. So number 11 is cancellations. And that kind of goes along with number 10 that we just talked about. Now these cancellations generally occurred due to unforeseen circumstances like we saw last year with the uh, out of control pricing and whatnot. But also the builder can cancel the contract if you, the buyer, just turn out to be a big old thorn in their backside and they just don't want to deal with you anymore. And yes, they can do that because that's another one of those clauses that's buried deep in that contract. Remember my uh, client who went with Builder B? Well, um, along with all the issues that he had the day before closing, they attempted to cancel the contract on him. So some builders can and will actually try to do that. Something to be aware of. Now just know that if that does happen, they have to give you back all your earnest money. So at least you're going to walk away with something right but conversely on the opposite side of that if you get upset with the builder you don't really have any recourse you want to walk away fine they'll let you walk but they're going to keep your earnest deposit you're not going to get anything and then you're right back to square one where you got to start all over and do the whole thing all over again now building a home it can be frustrating it can get ugly but it doesn't have to and one way to avoid that is by having a realtor representing you throughout the build process. Now, did you know that the builder will actually pay your agent's commission? You don't, you don't pay your agent. The builders already set aside money to pay for your agent, whether you use one or not. So if, if that's what's holding you back from hiring an agent, don't let that get in the way now. You need to have that representation and the builder will pay for it. Now, if you wanna know more about that, be sure to check out this video right up here. But you don't want to hire just any agent either. You want somebody who's well versed in the new build construction industry. And so along those lines, if you are thinking about building a new home in Queen Creek, Santan Valley, heck anywhere in the Phoenix metropolitan area, and you think that you and I might make a good fit, well then I invite you to call, text, email me, however you choose to communicate, we'll get together and we'll explore your options. Now lastly, I told you if you stayed to the end, I'd tell you how you can download your own free copy of my new home construction guide. So go to the description, I put a link down in the description of this video, click on that link. I need just a little bit of information, a name and an email address so that I know where to send the guide. Click on that, put in the information and the guide will automatically show up in your inbox. So I, I hope that you do that and I hope you find the information useful. Again, my name is John Farron. I'm a realtor with the Farron Group at HomeSmart Lifestyles right here in Queen Creek, Arizona.